Titans All Access continues from the Bet MGM studio. And as promised, I got my Oilers gear on. I've put on my white shoes, and I'm ready for this very special Nissan Insider with the newest member of the Oilers Titans Ring of Honor, Billy White Shoes Johnson. It is an honor and a pleasure, sir. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. It's good to be here and good to be seen these days. All right, so I have to ask this question. Do you ever wear anything other than white shoes? No, I don't. No. <laughs> Early on, I might have, but after that second or third year, I don't think I have. So how did you become White Shoes Johnson? I was the president of the Pat Boone Club. We were white uh, bucks. I'm lying. Don't I was going to say, you got to be kidding me. I know about the white bucks <laughs> with Pat <laughs> Boone, but like, no. no, that's good. No. <laughs> very, very well done. I started uh, just to be different in uh, high school because that, at that time, everybody was wearing black shoes. and. It was kind of redundant to me, and I just wanted to do a little flash. So we were sitting on our front porch, I guess, one day, and a good friend of ours came up to me while I was out there. I'm young and impressionable. He asked me, if you think you're so good, why don't you wear uh, uh, white shoes like Joe Willie Namath? Well, because he was the guy. He was the guy who started. He wore those white spot belts. Exactly. That were so sweet. Yeah, they were nice. And see, what I did, when I got my shoes, finally, we went to a game and we played the best defense in our county. And I had a good game, and uh, it was a homecoming game. So they says, Blazing Billy, white shoes. And ever since then, and ever since that game, that I had that good game, and uh, they've been calling me white shoes. Now my coach didn't, didn't, didn't care too much for it at first. But when I went to training camp, and I wore them one day, and he came after a, uh, a second, a third or fourth day, uh, two a days, and we were gonna have a scrimmage, he said, uh, What's up with the shoes? And for no better reason, I said, they, they make me run faster. <laughs> and he didn't say a word, he just said, so, okay, he nodded his head. So we had a scrimmage and I had a good game. He never said another word about the shoes. Where did the dance come from and when did it first oh, happen? Oh, I know, oh, I know yeah. the dance itself was the funky chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But where did it come from in your mind to do that? And where did you first do it? I first did it, I was, you know, at that time <clears throat> in college, we were playing a rival team of ours. And they were a little hokey. They got a little above themselves, you know? And me being always in the entertainment field at that time, I would be hosting nightclub acts and stuff like that. So I had- Really? A, yeah, I had a chance to host a Rufus Thomas who made the funky- Funky you know, chicken famous, yeah. Who made the, hey, do the funky chicken. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you another lie, so. <laughs> oh, you did, see? <laughs> no, I shouldn't do that. I promise no more, no more storytelling. But I did know Rufus Thomas yeah, you know was, that, so I didn't know that you, was true. You know and that, that could have happened. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. It, yeah, that's what happened in the court of law. You could have told it could me have that happened, and I would have yeah. never doubted you. No, you're right, because it's almost like the truth, uh -huh. you know. But no, but what happened, we were, this is true, we were playing a rival ball club of ours. And I said, I tell you what, if I were to score, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dance, and then I did something. And he said, man, you ain't going to do it. I said, man, I am, I really am. So uh, I, I scored a couple of times, I danced a couple of times, and I kept my end of the bargain. Did you know you were going to do that when you got in the end zone when you were with the Oilers, or did it just happen? It just ha I promise you, it just happened. We had beat the Steelers. I had scored on the end around, and I went in there, and I automatically did it. And then a couple other times, I said, I'm not going to dance again, and it just happened. Then later on, they said, man, we like that dance. We want to see you do it more. But you think about the, the fabric of the NFL, and everybody knows who you are because of your nickname. They can't tell the story of this league without you. I mean, you've had a remarkable career in and outside of football, but I mean, this has got to be, for a guy who played at Widener, and it, it's got to be a little mind numbing, right? It is overwhelming to a point. Uh, when Amy uh, gave me the news that they were going to put me into the ring of honor, boy, I mean, I was, speechless and overwhelmed, because that takes a lot for a team to sit down there and decide of who would go into the Ring of Honor. And I'm looking at the guys that I'm following, Earl Campbell, Robert Brazil, uh, Alvin Bethay, Frank Wycheck, and all these guys. It's, it, that's talk, you know, you're, you're in big company, big time company. Uh, and 
you know, I just feel blessed and fortunate that I came along when I came along and played for the right people. Uh, and I just have been so fortunate. It's been a great walk for me, a great run. And I have no regrets. I do it again. This moment of being inducted to the Ring of Honor is, is something I never thought about. I never found it in any way. Billy White Shoes Johnson, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. You can hear my entire conversation with the Oilers legend on the official Titans podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts, including TennesseeTitans.com slash podcasts. That's the OTP.